Welcome to section 5 in gastroenterology. In this section, we will discuss the gastrointestinal hormones. So let's get started. So here's figure 5.12 from your text. And as you can see, there are three categories of hormones, which are each color coded. In blue are the endocrine hormones, in green are the neurocrine hormones, and in red are the paracrine hormones. Endocrine simply means these hormones are released into the blood, then travel to the portal vein, and then exert their effect on the target cells. Paracrine means the hormone diffuses locally to the target cell. For example, histamine. Histamine was discussed in section one of this chapter, and histamine will diffuse from the ECL cells and then exert their effect on the parietal cells. Finally, neurocrine cells can be thought of more easily by thinking of them as neurotransmitters. This may not be technically correct, but it will help you better see how they function. For example, the vagus nerve will release GRP, and the GRP will enter the synaptic cleft, and it will then act on the G cells, and the G cells will be stimulated to release gastrin. Before we get into each one of these, understand that the substances discussed in sections one and two of this chapter, such as pepsinogen and acid from the stomach, as well as the enzymes released from the pancreas are all exocrine. And exocrine means they are released directly into the lumen. For example, pepsinogen is released into the stomach. Acid is released into the stomach. Pancreatic enzymes are released into the duodenum. So first let's talk about cholecystokinin, or CCK. Now these are produced by the eye cells in the duodenum. And these eye cells are stimulated to release CCK when fats and lipids enter the duodenum. And CCK aids in fat digestion. And it does this by causing gallbladder contraction and relaxation of the sphincter of OD. And what this does is cause the release of bile. And that bile will help emulsify fat. CCK will also stimulate pancreatic secretions. And as you recall from section two of this chapter, the pancreas will release pancreatic enzymes, much of which will help break down fat. So in general, CCK will help aid in fat digestion by emulsifying the fat via bile and helping the pancreas release its fat digesting enzymes, such as lipase. It's also important to know that CCK will decrease gastric emptying. And what this does is help the person feel more full or increase satiety because more chyme is staying within the stomach. So here again is figure 5.12 from your text. And when fat enters the duodenum, the eye cells will be stimulated to release CCK. CCK will then go to stimulate the gallbladder to contract. And then it will also cause relaxation of the sphincter of Odi. And this will allow bile to enter the duodenum. CCK will also stimulate the pancreas to release pancreatic enzymes, such as lipase. And as stated before, CCK will also decrease gastric emptying, which helps the individual feel fuller after eating. You can also remember this function by thinking the enzymes need enough time to digest the fats in the lumen. So CCK will slow down new entry of chyme from the stomach to the duodenum. So to summarize, CCK, or cholecystokinin, is stimulated by fats, which cause the eye cells to release CCK, which then travels through the blood to cause the gallbladder to contract, the sphincter of OD to relax, leading to bile release. It'll also stimulate the pancreas to release lipase. So now let's do a question to apply this. A patient presents with right upper quadrant pain after eating a meal. Ultrasound demonstrates the presence of a gallstone. The clinician deduces that the patient's pain must be caused by gallbladder contraction against the stone. What is the pathway leading to contraction of the gallbladder? So this patient has a gallstone, and then they eat a meal, and then they get pain. What is the pathway for this? Well, when the patient eats a meal, fat enters the duodenum, which will stimulate the eye cells to release CCK. CCK will then act on the gallbladder cause it to contract. And this contraction of the gallbladder would cause pain if the gallstone enters the cystic duct, which we discussed in section four of this chapter. So now let's talk about secretin. Secretin is produced by the S cells in the duodenum, and it's stimulated by acid and fat. And overall, you can think of the function of secretin as decreasing acidity. And by decreasing the acidity of the chyme in the lumen, it will improve the function of the pancreatic enzymes, 
which function best when it's not as acidic. And what secretin does is it will stimulate the chloride bicarb antiporter in the pancreas. And this will allow more bicarb to be released into the intestinal lumen, which will increase the luminal pH or decrease acidity. Secretin also decreases gastrin secretion from the stomach and the duodenum. And this causes decreased acid release. So this will also increase luminal pH and cause decreased acidity. Secretin also increases bile production within the liver itself, which ultimately would aid in fat digestion for reasons we just discussed when discussing CCK. So here again is figure 5.12 from your text. When fats or acid enter the lumen, the S cells will release secretin. Secretin will then travel through their blood and act to decrease the acidity of the chyme so the pancreatic enzymes can function better. And just understand that excess acidity is harmful to the enzymes that the pancreas releases. Now secretin does this by decreasing acid production from the parietal cells of the stomach. It will also increase bicarb secretion from the pancreas, which will help neutralize any acid coming into the duodenum. So the bicarb will leave the pancreas. It will also act on the liver to increase bile production. So in summary, just think that secretin decreases acidity by decreasing acid production and releasing bicarb. Now let's do a question to apply this. A patient has a tumor that causes the production of excess acid within the stomach. What hormone will be released to counteract the acidity of the chyme? And where is it released from? So the patient has excess acid within the chyme due to a tumor. The acidic chyme will then enter the duodenum and the low pH will be sensed by the S cells. So low pH means high acidity. And this will stimulate the S cells to secrete secretin. Secretin will then cause the release of bicarb from the pancreas and it will decrease acid production from the parietal cells. So in answer to our question, what hormone will be released to counteract the acidity of the chyme? It will be secretin. And where is it released from? The S cells. Now this scenario with a tumor in the stomach creating excess acid is actually called Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. This is a gastrinoma, which causes excess gastrin to be produced, which will stimulate the parietal cells to secrete more acid. If we were to extend the question, we could ask, this patient has Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. What will be the serum secretion levels in this patient relative to a patient without a gastrinoma such as this? Now, all of the acid from the parietal cells will cause hypersecretion from the S cells. In other words, increased acid will lead to increased secretin secretion. So there will be a higher level of secretin to try to balance out the higher level of acid. So this gastronoma will have higher levels of serum secretin than a healthy patient without gastronoma. In fact, in a patient with ZE syndrome, this high secretin is actually a good diagnostic tool when working out the patient.